Welcome to the Longford GA Virtual Athletic Development Programme. This session is designed to help you improve your muscular endurance and strength to boost your performance when you get back to the pitch. As the video plays, you will see the warm-up and exercises to be completed. The equipment you need for this session is a chair, a sweep and brush, a bottle of water and your own music for the background. This week you will be working for 40 seconds with 15 seconds to catch your breath as the next exercise is introduced. This will make the session a little bit harder and some exercises have been progressed. The video will guide you on what to do for the entire session. Once you complete one set of all the exercises, you'll have a three minute break to rest and drink some water before you repeat the exercises in the second and third set. Make sure you have lots of space, use shoes with good grip and a safe surface, have water nearby to stay hydrated and a towel for sweat. Remember you are participating at your own risk and if you feel pain at any stage, stop the exercise. We have not included music in the video so you can use your own favourite music as you train. Keep in mind that you will only get benefit from these exercises by working hard and challenging yourself. Enjoy! In the email you received a log sheet, I would urge you to print this off and fill in these sheets as you go to keep track of your progression from session to session and week to week. Hi all, uh, Daniel Mimna here, uh, Kilo and Longford Senior Footballer. Welcome to the next phase of the Athletic Development Programme. So I'm just going to start you off with a small warm-up routine just to get you in the rhythm and the, the, the lads will lead you through the rest of the exercises. So we'll just start off nice and easy with a few scissors kicks. So we're going to go for 20 seconds and we'll do that two times. So we'll start off slow and we'll build our way up. So we're just going to get into the routine. So just one foot in front of the other and we're just working on a run of mechanics as well. So we have left, right foot out in front, left hand and we're just going to go forward and back and get into the routine. And then we'll work our way up for 20 seconds. So ready? And go. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Good. So we'll take just a 10 second break and we'll go through it again. All right, so nice rhythm, focus on the running mechanics and work up to a, a comfortable speed. So ready? Three, two, one, go. One, Two, six, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Good. Now, second exercise we're going to go through is our double leg glute bridge. So we're lying on the ground, nice position. Back down, we're trying to focus on, we're trying to focus on pushing our glute, really focus on uh, tightening the glutes and then holding up for, we're doing eight reps. So it's slow down for three seconds and put power up. Keep them glutes tight. That's one. Up, two. Down, up, three. Two, one, up, four. So really drive up, keep them glutes tight. Five, six, seven, eight, and done. Good stuff. Okay, next one is bear holds. So we all know our bear crawls. We're just doing the hold. So we're getting hands down under our shoulders so we're all, it's all parallel. Knees on the floor, 90 degree. And all we're going to do for 20 second hold is we're going to go just lift our knees off, keep our back straight, no humping the back, keep it nice and straight, and up. And holding that for 20 seconds and really tighten the glutes and tighten your core. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 
16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Good, and down. We'll just take a five second break. Just really make sure that the core is strong and the glutes are firing. So really tight and tense. Ready? Three, two, one, and go again. Nice parallel, no arch in the back. Knees just off the surface. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Good. Lovely. Okay, up. Now we're just working on our hips. So really make sure in, in our running mechanics our hips are so important here. So working on the hip flexor and the groin here. So just nice and step in, up, out, and down. And okay, now we're doing five on each leg. So alternate each leg. And every time get your knee 90 degree up, and then out, and down. So really power. All your sprinting motions, you have to have your high knee drive. And that's what we're working on. So that's two on each side. Nice and balanced. Three. That's four on each side. Last one. And five. Lovely. Now guys we're doing the crab crawl, so we're just going five reps up, five reps back. So I don't have if you don't have the space, just go two up, two back. Okay, so we're going for a total of ten reps. Alright? So just from the side angle, this is what we're looking at. Okay, don't let the hips drop, keep them nice and up, and we're working backwards. Two, three, four. One, two, three. Four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Good. Now, nearly there, lads. Three more exercises. So the next one is a uh, frog walks. Okay, so we all know our frog walks. Again, we're firing our hips here. So down in the frog position. Okay, we're putting hands out from front. Okay, just from the side here. Hands out in front, okay. We're put weight on our shoulders, so we're trying to put the weight up on our shoulders, okay. Just coming off the arches, and we're not trying to lift our hips, okay. Try, try keeping them down, and we're firing them, okay. So back on the heel, lean, and you're keeping the hips down, okay. So we're going for five of them. Ready? Three, two, one, go. I'll do one, one. Two, three, that's three, so two more, I'll just do two from the side, okay, one, two, okay, so five in total, well done, so last few, okay, last two exercises, alright, really, we're working on side to side jumps. So just pick a line here. I have a line here in the, in the ground. Okay. Just focus on power on each side. It's like a hot potato with your foot off the surface. So 20 seconds. So you should really be powering. Ready? And go. One. Halfway there. Nineteen twenty. Well done. Good stuff. So really make sure hopefully you power through that. Now the last one. We just have our, our jumps up and down. Okay. So what we're really focusing on. Right. Getting down to about 90 degree. And we're powering up. And we're sticking each land. Okay. And then from the front. Straight down. Okay. So it's like a three second drop. Power up. Land. Okay. So a little bend in the knees when you're landing. Ready? So we're going for five. And you stop in between each one. So ready? Let's go. Three, two, one, drop. Up. Land. Three, two, 
One, drop, up, and land. Three, two, one, up, and land. That's two. Three, two, one, drop, up, and land. Hello, well guys. To start, lie flat on the ground with your feet flat under your knees. Raise your left leg in the air and keep the knee bent. Using your right leg, push against the floor to raise your hips up as high as you can to complete a rep and then return to the start position. Keep your head relaxed during the exercise. You should feel this exercise working the muscles of the backside. The side plank is set up by placing your elbow under your shoulder and stacking your feet on top of one another. Lift your hips up and push them forward. Imagine there is a fire under your hips and you need to keep them up high. Breathe throughout. Set up in the push-up position with your hands directly under your shoulders. Slowly lower yourself down until your chest is close to the ground or touches the book and then return to the starting position. Focus on not allowing your hips to sag or having your backside too high in the air. Try to keep your elbows tucked in close to the body. Stand tall with your feet at shoulder width apart and hold a broom directly over your head. From here you will bend at the knees and drop into the squat but focus on trying to keep the broom directly above your head at all times. Remember your feet should be flat on the ground at all times so don't let your heels lift up off the floor. To begin, stand tall, then reach down to touch your toes and walk out your hands slowly with tiny steps. At the end, you will do a push-up and then slowly walk your hands back towards your feet and return to a standing position. Focus on keeping your legs as straight as possible throughout the exercise.
This is a good exercise for core strength and controlling all four limbs. Set up as shown in the video, the smaller the steps you take the better. Keep your knees very low, just hovering above the ground. The side plank is set up by placing your elbow under your shoulder and stacking your feet on top of one another. Lift your hips up and push them forward. Imagine there is a fire under your hips and you need to keep them up high. Breathe throughout. To start, lie flat on the ground with your feet flat under your knees. Raise your right leg in the air and keep the knee bent. Using the left leg, push against the floor to raise your hips up as high as you can to complete a rep and then return to the starting position. Keep your head relaxed during the exercise. You should feel this exercise working the muscles of the backside. You now have three minutes to rest and relax. It is important to use this time to catch your breath to be ready for the next set of exercises, which will be a repeat of the previous one. Use the time to drink small sips of water and try to control your breathing rate. Hi everybody, Pori Davis here, Lamford, uh, Senior Football Manager. Um, just in relation to, I suppose, what makes the complete player or what can contribute to it and I suppose just from a, from a physical point of view the basic skills of the game and we've heard that from from the very beginning the importance of it and, and I think the one that is missed and it's very important particularly with with, with younger kids is, is trying to develop both sides is, is so important both left hand right hand off your left foot off your right foot exit and left exit and right and um, things like that which are very very common in hurling and we probably don't concentrate to the same level in in, in gaelic football but for me that is a hugely important um physical aspect of it just work on both sides in general and i think Overall, just I suppose um, the willingness to learn uh, the, and the coachability factor that all, all um, footballers must have, and it's just the day, on a day-to-day -day basis, just chasing that improvement all the time uh, and looking to better yourself. And the importance of every single session mattering. Uh, you're only there for a limited time, no matter what group you're involved in. You're probably only together for maybe six hours in total, and you have access to those coaches. So it's, it's about making the the very most out of it. And then in general, general, just having a that work ethic, the accountability, and an overall positive attitude that contributes greatly to the group. So that's the look to all.
to start lie flat on the ground with your feet flat under your knees. Raise your left leg in the air and keep the knee bent. Using your right leg, push against the floor to raise your hips up as high as you can to complete a rep and then return to the start position. Keep your head relaxed during the exercise. You should feel this exercise working the muscles of the backside. The side plank is set up by placing your elbow under your shoulder and stacking your feet on top of one another. Lift your hips up and push them forward. Imagine there is a fire under your hips and you need to keep them up high. Breathe throughout. Set up in the push-up position with your hands directly under your shoulders. Slowly lower yourself down until your chest is close to the ground or touches the book and then return to the starting position. Focus on not allowing your hips to sag or having your backside too high in the air. Try to keep your elbows tucked in close to the body. Stand tall with your feet at shoulder width apart and hold a broom directly over your head. From here you will bend at the knees and drop into the squat but focus on trying to keep the broom directly above your head at all times. Remember your feet should be flat on the ground at all times so don't let your heels lift up off the floor. To begin, stand tall, then reach down to touch your toes and walk out your hands slowly with tiny steps. At the end, you will do a push-up and then slowly walk your hands back towards your feet and return to a standing position. Focus on keeping your legs as straight as possible throughout the exercise. This is a good exercise for core strength and controlling all four limbs. Set up as shown in the video, the smaller the steps you take the better. 
Keep your knees very low, just hovering above the ground. The side plank is set up by placing your elbow under your shoulder and stacking your feet on top of one another. Lift your hips up and push them forward. Imagine there is a fire under your hips and you need to keep them up high. Breathe throughout. To start, lie flat on the ground with your feet flat under your knees. Raise your right leg in the air and keep the knee bent. Using the left leg, push against the floor to raise your hips up as high as you can to complete a rep and then return to the starting position. Keep your head relaxed during the exercise. You should feel this exercise working the muscles of the backside. You now have three minutes to rest and relax. It is important to use this time to catch your breath to be ready for the next set of exercises, which will be a repeat of the previous one. Use the time to drink small sips of water and try to control your breathing rate. Hi everyone, it's Claire Farrell, Performance Nutritionist here. So today I'm going to be sharing a few tips on fueling your brain for study. So first of all, remembering back to my tips on hydration and why hydration is important. Well, staying well hydrated during the day can help with our cognitive function or thinking ability. So this will help to keep your concentration levels nice and high. So remember to sip small amounts of fluid regularly throughout the day and aim for that light colored pee. So number two is fueling your brain. So just like our body needs fuel or food to go about our daily activity, but also perform well during exercise, our brain too needs fuel, especially in the form of carbohydrate. So for example, our brain uses up on 120 grams of carbohydrate per day, which is equal to, let's say, four to five bananas or six slices of bread. So that brings me to my next point of fueling regularly throughout the day. So avoid going large amounts of time without food because our body needs fuel, but also our brain needs fuel. So we want to prevent having those kind of dips in our energy. So maybe between your meals, you might have a nice snack in there to help keep your energy levels high, prevent you getting distracted and keep your brain and body working efficiently. So maybe adding in some Greek yogurt and berries or fruit or even a smoothie would be nice. And last point then is omega-3 fatty acids can help with our brain function and brain health. So these would be present in our oily fish, such as salmon, mackerel, sardines, herring, fresh tuna. So we should aim for two portions of oily fish per week and also including some other sources of healthy fats, such as avocado, nuts, seeds, extra virgin olive oil, for example, would be good to include throughout the day too. So I hope these help with your study Best of luck and enjoy the rest of the session.
to start lie flat on the ground with your feet flat under your knees raise your left leg in the air and keep the knee bent using your right leg push against the floor to raise your hips up as high as you can to complete a rep and then return to the start position keep your head relaxed during the exercise you should feel this exercise working the muscles of the backside. The side plank is set up by placing your elbow under your shoulder and stacking your feet on top of one another. Lift your hips up and push them forward. Imagine there is a fire under your hips and you need to keep them up high. Breathe throughout. Set up in the push-up position with your hands directly under your shoulders. Slowly lower yourself down until your chest is close to the ground or touches the book and then return to the starting position. Focus on not allowing your hips to sag or having your backside too high in the air. Try to keep your elbows tucked in close to the body. Stand tall with your feet at shoulder width apart and hold a broom directly over your head. From here you will bend at the knees and drop into the squat but focus on trying to keep the broom directly above your head at all times. Remember your feet should be flat on the ground at all times so don't let your heels lift up off the floor. To begin, stand tall, then reach down to touch your toes and walk out your hands slowly with tiny steps. At the end, you will do a push-up and then slowly walk your hands back towards your feet and return to a standing position. Focus on keeping your legs as straight as possible throughout the exercise. This is a good exercise for core strength and controlling all four limbs. Set up as shown in the video, the smaller the steps you take the better. 
Keep your knees very low, just hovering above the ground. The side plank is set up by placing your elbow under your shoulder and stacking your feet on top of one another. Lift your hips up and push them forward. Imagine there is a fire under your hips and you need to keep them up high. Breathe throughout. To start, lie flat on the ground with your feet flat under your knees. Raise your right leg in the air and keep the knee bent. Using the left leg, push against the floor to raise your hips up as high as you can to complete a rep and then return to the starting position. Keep your head relaxed during the exercise. You should feel this exercise working the muscles of the backside. You now have three minutes to rest and relax. It is important to use this time to catch your breath to be ready for the challenge which will begin at the end of these three minutes. Use this time to drink small sips of water and try to control your breathing rate and get set for the challenge. Hi everyone, very welcome to today's piece. Just a short piece on dealing with a setback or dealing with winning. So for me, uh, should be very similar uh, processes post a win or post a defeat of how we look at the game, how we look at our performance. And the first question I would say you should post yourself is, how am I feeling about my performance? Am I happy? Am I sad? Am I disappointed? Am I over the moon? What is the emotion I'm feeling after my performance? And maybe a short explanation as to why. And then the second piece is then, what can I maybe recall about my performance? And we all have maybe faulty memories and faulty levels of recall at different times. We can't maybe remember parts of games or the end of games or the middle of games. So sometimes we need footage or some playing facts or stats from our coach to highlight to us maybe more possessions we had than we thought or more scores we assisted in than we thought or more tackles we assisted in than we thought. Sometimes when we are negative after game poster performance, we don't actually maybe recognize some of the plays that we did have in the game. So if you had some footage or if you had some playing facts, it's a good way to challenge some of the faulty recall we do have around our performance. And then it's also important then to look at point three and say, what went well for my performance? And I start to start with the positives and open up the possibilities of things that I did well and I tried to search in my memory or search the footage for the good tackles put in or the space I created or the support runs off the ball that I made or the high catch that I made and I start to recall and write down some of those playing facts and memory of them and uh, you know start to collect some data on 
you know, how many possessions you had, how many successful passes you had, how many tackles you put in, how many scores you assisted in or created, uh, and other aspects that you noticed in your display that you thought went well. And then always looking at, you know, mistakes or things that you didn't do in the game as learnings, maybe and opportunities to grow for the next game and the next training session. So what was maybe something in my game that I'd like to improve on? So maybe my hand passing let me down on a particular occasion. Maybe uh, I didn't track the runners and I lost concentration at different times. Maybe it's just identifying maybe one or two areas that you feel maybe consistently you didn't perform as well as you'd like. And you look at them and you say, how could I bring that into training now and choose the night and focus on improving that maybe in the, the drills that we do or maybe some of the games that we do? And it's trying to highlight those things and work on them then on a consistent basis and bring them up to the next level for the next game. And there'll always be another opportunity to display these skills in a game or a training scenario. So, you know, don't be too hard on yourself post a, a defeat. There's always good things in the performance that you can search for and look for and highlight yourself. And by doing that, you're raising your confidence levels and your competence levels in the game. And also by recognizing the things to work on, even when you win a game, it just keeps you grounded and keeps you progressing forward as a player. So we're never the most outstanding player just because we've won a game and we're never a totally useless player just because we've lost a game. And it's important that we give ourselves some context by writing down after a game four or five of these points to give ourselves a bit of context in our head and also look forward to the next game with excitement of playing even better. Thank you. When you're finished in session, be sure to take the time to stretch out all the major muscles and allow your heart rate to slow down. This will challenge your core strength and endurance. You must stay in the plank position throughout with either your elbows or your hands holding your body. You cannot have your knees touching the ground. You must aim to return the ball to the wall as many times as you can, alternating which hand you are using with every strike. The real challenge here is being able to manage your body weight when swapping from using your right to left hands. To make this challenge harder, do it with your feet close together.